Hi, welcome to our first Naviate Rebar Discovery session. In these sessions, we will investigate new Naviate Rebar tool sets and how the technology integrates with the new features available in Autodesk Revit 2023. Our Naviate Rebar tools offer exciting possibilities for the creation and editing of typical reinforcement. The reinforcement shape codes and rebar types are directly read from your project environment, which means you always have the correct bar types and shapes available within Naviate Rebar. The units and structural settings are also read from the project, meaning that Naviate Rebar will work with any country's standard and support metric and imperial measurements. Naviate Rebar replaces our older Naviate Rebar extension, which is available for previous versions of Revit. Naviate Rebar offers many advantages over the original set of tools, such as modeless dialog boxes, saved settings, intelligent rebar sets, and rebar constraints, to name a few. Let's begin by taking a look at our beam command. You can either pick the element first or the command first. In this case, I'll go ahead and select beam. I'll then select a beam that I want to add reinforcement to. You can now see our beam reinforcement dialog. In this case here, we'll start to configure the stirrups. So we'll have uh, double stirrups. You can see that we're using the bar type H12. All of these are loaded in from my template file. In this case, I'll use shape code 51. Again, all of these again are loaded into my template file. Onto the stirrup distribution, you can see here that we can have one, two or three zones. We can control them by percentages or lengths. In this case, I'll just have a single zone and I'll set the spacing to 200. We'll then configure the main rebars. So here we'll select H20s for the top. And also you can see we've got H20s for the bottom and we've got four bars both on the top and the bottom. Finally, we could configure sidebars if the beam was deep enough. I'll go ahead and select apply to apply that reinforcement to my selected beam. So the rebar has now been generated and now I can go ahead and select additional beams. So I'll select this one here and click apply to add that extra reinforcement. And again here, I'll select these two beams and once again, apply the reinforcement concurrently to both of those selection sets. To make the rebar visible, we'll use our rebar ribbon tab. And here we'll say show rebar and also show obscured. If we zoom in here, we can now see our reinforcement bar placed out. Of course, if we want to make any design changes to our reinforcement, for example, I might want to actually set up some zones here. I can actually read the reinforcement settings from the beam. And now I can make the relevant edits. So in this case here, perhaps I want to go to a single link and then I'll select apply. We can also configure name settings for our beams. In this case here, I'm going to read the settings from this beam up here that I've previously reinforced. You'll notice in the dialog that this particular reinforcement is a name setting called B1. With all of our Naviate rebar tools, we try and modify the reinforcement bar rather than deleting it and recreating it. To show this in action, I'll go ahead and open up a sheet documenting one of these beams. Of course, you can see the same beam is still selected. And if we take a look at the cross section here, you can see that I've got two different bars. I've got three bars with bar mark two and four bars with bar mark three. The top bars are H16s. So what I'm gonna now do is amend this to a H20 and put four bars in. So we'll select H20 here. We'll now create four bars and go ahead and click save to save the name settings. Naviate's now informing us that these name settings are applied to two beams. We'll go ahead and say yes. And straight away now, we can see that those bars have updated. And of course, if we look at the tags and the reinforcement here, we can see here that both of the layers of reinforcement have updated to H20s. If we go back to our 3D working view, again here, we can now see that we've got four bars at the top of both of those beams. So that's a very quick and efficient way of updating multiple elements. Next, we'll take a look at some column reinforcement. In this case, we'll place some reinforcement into this circular column here. Once again, we'll select the command first, and then we'll select the column that we want to reinforce. Naviate will then detect the shape of the column and display the appropriate dialog box. The same framework applies to column reinforcement as it did to beam reinforcement. So we can configure the stirrups, the stirrup distribution, whether we want a single zone, two zones or three zones. We can select our main rebars, and the DAOs or starter bars. In this case, we'll accept all the defaults and select apply to generate the reinforcement. Again, we can then apply that to multiple columns. So I'll then select a number of circular columns from the model. 
and then again select apply to apply all the rebar concurrently. Let's now look at some additional reinforcement on the square columns. In the top left hand corner you can see that we've already applied some reinforcement to this rectangular column here. I'm going to use some standard Revit 2023 technology to propagate the rebar. So I'll select the column and here we'll select propagate rebar. You can see here that we have a line to host which is the one I want to actually use in this case and then I can make a selection set of similar columns. So in this case I'll just use a crossing window across these columns here and you can now see that that rebar is propagated. We'll select finish and the rebar is placed. Now this rebar was placed into the original column using name settings. So let's now make some edits to this. So I'll select the column and then from the context ribbon panel, we'll go ahead and use column. Notice now the column reinforcement dialog has configured itself to the rectangular column. And of course now we can make some design changes. So perhaps now I want to amend the main reinforcement from a H25 to H20s. Again, if I click save, Naviate will now detect that that reinforcement was propagated to all six of those columns with the name C1. If I click yes, that reinforcement will then be amended and edited across all of those columns. Finally, we'll take a look at some wall reinforcement. So we'll select a wall over here. Once again, on the context ribbon, we can go ahead and select the wall reinforcement tool. And again, we have the same framework, so we can save the settings. We can set up our main reinforcement bars if you want the vertical bars to be on the second layer or perhaps the first layer. We can select our vertical bars here and again set those up, the horizontal bars, as well as then the dowels that we might want to actually have set up as well. In this case here, we'll actually set up some dowels on the right hand side of the wall. We'll actually use U bars here and then we'll have some starter bars on the top of the wall. We'll then select apply to place out that reinforcement. Again, to see the reinforcement, we can go to our Naviate rebar ribbon, show rebar and also show obscured. You can see here that I've got the placement wrong, so I've actually got the U-bar on the uh, wrong side, so I want it on the other side here. So we'll read the rebar settings from the ward itself, and then we'll uncheck the right dowel, and then place in the left dowels instead. And you can see that we've got the U-bar selected, and click apply. And of course now we can see all of that reinforcement bar has been edited. Once again we can visualise that by going to show obscured. And then we can close down our wall reinforcement dialog, and we can see then that reinforcement placed. Okay, so that concludes our first discovery session where we've looked at beams, columns and wall reinforcement and the general process of placing rebar with Naviate Rebar Tools. I look forward to seeing you all in discovery session too.